So the ACLU is tracking 40 other anti-LGBTQ bills in the U.S. Um, all of the states in purple are ones that are presenting the bills, like these lighter ones. They've got one to three bills. A little bit darker. Just stop. Has four, four to six, seven to nine, and then ten plus. Um, this will go state by state, showing you the different ones that we've got, including this SB 270 is one of them. Um, I think they're also going back over a, another one. The SB 199, and I will show you that one. This, these two are in Arkansas. They're actually going to have a hearing here soon on SB 199. And that's one that the state Supreme Court shared or struck down that they had tried to pass. And SB 199 is concerning medical malpractice and gender transition in minors and to create a protecting minors from medical malpractice act of 2023. So they had tried to do this before and it got struck down by the Arkansas Supreme Court. And it even basically blocked it to where even if parents were okay with give, with the children getting tr gender transition treatments. Now, this is not getting physical surgeries. This is getting hormone blockers and up until a certain age. And after they've been on the blockers for a few years and, and they get to the age to where they're about to, you know, about 16, 17, they start giving them the hormones and hormone replacement therapy. Now there's other conditions that people get hormone replacement therapy for. And it's most common in women, either after they've had a hysterectomy or after they go through menopause because your body is not producing the amount of estrogen. So we've already got a lot of research on how our bodies react to the hormone therapies we know what's safe, we know what's not, and they monitor your levels regularly. And so you're not just walking into a doctor's office and saying, I want to be put on hormones or I want to be put on blockers. You have to go through counseling and everything else first before you even start the process, especially with a minor. And so there's a bunch of hoops and that's the problem is our the states that are making these type of bills, they're not listening to the medical professionals or the psycho, psychological professionals on these matters. They're not believing the science behind what's being done, what the process is for them to go through it. And they do. They have to go in regularly and have their blood drawn and get their hormone levels checked. And they decide on that whether they're going to keep it where it is, raise it or lower the hormone levels. Um, so that's one of the things that our state is trying to do. So the other one here in Arkansas Yes, Judiciary Committee meeting in the State House is on my birthday. Oh, lovely. What a birthday yeah. gift. I know. So there's one, and that's just blocking people from getting the care. Let me share this.
an act concerning medical malpractice and gender transition in minors create the correct protecting minors for medical malpractice act of 2023 and for other purposes to be enacted by the general assembly of the state of arkansas protecting minors for medical malpractice act of 2023 definitions as been used in the sub chapter gender mm -hmm. transition procedure means any medical or surgical service including without limitation physician services inpatient outpatient hospital services or prescribed drug related to gender transition that seeks to alter or remove physical anatomical characteristics or features that are typical for a person's biological sex and still or create psychological or anatomical characteristics that remember resemble a sex different from the individual's biological sex, including without limitation medical services that provide puberty blocking drugs, cross sex hormones, or other mechanisms to promote the development of feminizing or masculinizing features in the opposite biological sex or genitalia or non-genitalia gender reassignment surgery performed for the purpose of assisting an individual's gender transition. Now, here's the thing. They don't do that in minors. The only times that this happens in minors is when you have a child that is bought that is born as intersex. So that means they've got genitalia from both male and female. And then the parents make that decision to do along with the doctors based on what parts are there what to assign them as. Um, that's going to make that illegal, which that aspect, I think it, they should wait till the child's older and let the child decide how they feel, you know, who they are, because that it does happen. It happens more than people know, because what they've always done is they do the surgeries on them when they're an infant and the doctors and parents decide what gender they're going to be. And they grow up knowing, not knowing anything different to until typically they become an adult and go for checkups, especially the female checkups that you have to get regularly and find out that they've had surgery. Oh. And they may have a uterus and not have an ovary, you know, because those things happen. That's been proven. We've had plenty of cases, and oftentimes the assigned gender that they get these children when they get older, they don't feel like that's who they are. And so that's why I say it shouldn't be done on children. It's not done on children except for those extreme cases. Otherwise, unless somebody has a teenage girl develops cancer, then they'll go in and either try chemo or radiation or, you know, remove parts due to cancer. Um, my aunt at 17 had an ovarian cyst on her ovary. So, and it was malignant. It was a malignant tumor on her ovary. And she didn't find out about it till so after she got pregnant, she was about five months pregnant. They told her she was either having twins or she had a tumor. So they went in and looked and through the ultrasound and found out that she did indeed have a tumor. And it was about the size of an orange. If it would have busted, it would have killed her and my cousin while she was pregnant. And so they went ahead while she was pregnant, went in and did surgery, an emergency surgery to remove that ovary. That would be illegal under this law to save her life and the life of her child. 
because she was only 17. That's what I want people to realize is I am an ally 100%, but you need to understand that these laws affect you as well. They are not solely just for trans people. They will harm and kill other people besides just transgender. That's they true. do affect us very much. And so that's the kinds of things that I want people to understand. Um, so it's just, it's crazy. There's that one. Okay, here's something Day Day saying. Yeah. I'll put Day Day up. You can read that. Howdy, just ducking in for a little bit. Anti-trans states are driven by religious GOP fascist mani maniacs. They say God over science. They don't care what science has to say. And they are saints of God, and it's their way or the highway, just like Zionists in Israel. Yep. And exactly. that's one of the things I'm going to get to if you've got time to at least listen. Um, there was a bill put up federally that would have protected transgender people federally. And it went nowhere. It died in committee. And that bill was put up before. Republicans took power of the House. I'll show that here just shortly. So, this is another one here. This one just went, got put back into committee this week, and it was the one that a lot of people were arguing over. And this is to amend criminal offense of sexual indecency with a child. Sounds good, right? You can go to that link and pull up the bill. I'm not pulling it up. I've already read through the trash on it. Um, basically, if... Um, Say you were born male, but you've transitioned to female. You go to the women's restroom because you've had the surgeries and you identify as a woman and you look like a woman and you're an adult. Well, just because you have the parts, but the fact that you were born a man, they're going to arrest and charge you with sexual indecency of a child if there's a child in that same public bathroom. You know, like the ones that have multiple stalls. So if there's a child in that bathroom and you walk into that bathroom and don't immediately turn around, walk back out and go use the men's room, you're going to get charged with sexual indecency with a child. And it's a felony offense. So they're going to ruin people's lives. Because <clears throat> I want you guys to think of it this way. You as a female. Would you feel comfortable. As a cis female. And looking like a cis female. Walking into a men's bathroom. To use the bathroom. I wouldn't. No, I went. I don't have a problem with being in a bathroom in a women's restroom with somebody who's transgender. But I would have a problem with going into a men's bathroom. And the reason why is being surrounded by men looking like a female. Mm. What depending on whether or not it's a good guy or whether it's a bad guy depends on how you'll get treated in that bathroom 
Uh, I'm not going to go further than that. You can use your imagination. I mean, it's not okay to put these people in that situation or just make it to where they can't go use the restroom anywhere in public at all at risk of being charged with a crime that they didn't commit because of our legislators. So this is happening in Arkansas. Arkansas is not the only state as what we saw in the AOC map or the ACLU map on the states passing the laws. Another one that's a bill that's coming up in Florida. Let me pull this article up here. And I will read it. A new bill could legalize kidnapping trans, trans kids by their parents. A new bill in Florida could let kids' parents take their child from the other parent across state lines if the child is receiving gender-affirming health care in another state. A newly introduced bill in Florida could let a parent kidnap their children eight lines that the parent believes the child is receiving gender affirming care. In one second. Um, gender affirming health care or if the child is simply at risk of getting that care. A court may not treat a parent's removal of a child from another parent or from another state as justifiable conduct or child abuse, reads the bill, introduced Friday by Republican State Senator Clay Yarborough. The bill would also let any would also let any court step in to determine if custody of a child is getting gender affirming health care oh. and it would block any public agency from spending money on gender affirming care leaving people who depend on the government for help affording this type of care to fend for themselves oh stop um it's just ridiculous a transphobic parent could kidnap their trans child in violation of custody agreements and have gone to Florida to be protected by Florida law under this, despite likely committing felony kidnapping in their home state. Alejandro Carballo, a clinical instructor, instructor at Harvard's law school, cyber law clinic tweeted of the bill. Speaking of all the bills targeting trans folks now swirling through Florida state legislator, this is full elimination of recognition and limitation on the access of care for trans people, including all trans adults. This bill is only the latest volley in the nationwide battle over the rights of trans and non-binary children. So far, at least five states have banned providing banned providers from offering gender-affirming care to minors, even if their parents support it. Three of those states, Mississippi, Utah, and South Dakota, have passed these bans in the last month. Meanwhile, federal courts have blocked these laws from taking effect in Arkansas and Alabama, which, yeah, the we had had one go through when um, with our previ previous governor and I think it was about a year ago and what happened was the governor actually changed his mind on signing the bill 
because several trans people went down there and had meetings with him and explained the process to him and everything that goes on, including with trans minors, how, how the system works. And so, but he vetoed it. But because we have such a big Republican supermajority in the House and Senate, they were able to go over his veto. So they voted it into law. So several trans, several families of trans children fled the state, left and moved to safer states. And the other ones that stayed sued and it went to the Arkansas Supreme Court and the Supreme Court blocked it. Now they're trying it again with Sarah Huckabee Sanders in office. The South Dakota law would also force trans youth to detransition because it only lets doctors who treat trans youth to have one year to stop providing gender affirming care. Opposition to trans and non-binary youth's right to care is a common tactic of the GOP playbook. In 2022, Republican candidates and anti-LGBTQ groups spent upwards of $50 million on ads that primarily target trans youth. According to the research of the Human Rights Campaign, trans and non-binary children face staggering rates of depression, anxiety, and suicidal ideation, but letting them use puberty blockers, hormones, and gender-affirming surgeries have all been linked to improving their mental health. Like I said, those surgeries typically do not happen until they're 18 or up. So, there are all forms of health care that would lead kids kidnapping to be justified under this new law. Yeah, um, I know of patients, like I've said before, who their bodies don't produce the hormones properly. Like born a, with male genitals, but their body does not produce the male hormones properly. And so starting at a young age, they start them on hormone replacement therapy. There's plenty of cases and that would justify a parent for kidnapping? No. And it's just, it's disgusting. And yeah, Day Day, you're right. Only perverts think like that. It's just. And the majority of cases currently in my state of um, child sexual assault, the majority of those cases are youth leaders or very religious right-wing people. And that's the sad part. It's projection. They're trying to cover up their crimes by blaming somebody else who's completely innocent. And so when I was saying that there is or was a bill that would have protected trans people from this type of um, bigotry at a legislative level, there was one. And I'm going to show you that. USHR 
2021-109. It was 2021-2022-117th Congress. It was put in by the prior session legislation. Um, I believe this one was done by Corey Bush. But you can see all the sponsors on here of this bill. It's 100% Democrat sponsors. But they sponsored the bill. And yet, it never left committee. It died in the committee. Summary. Recognizing that it is the duty of the federal government to develop and implement a transgender bill of rights to protect and codify the rights of transgender and non-binary people under the law and ensure their access to medical care, shelter, safety, and economic security. Let's see if it's going to show who voted, voted on it in committee. It got Recognizing that it is the duty of the federal government to develop and implement a transgender bill of rights. Partisan bill, Democrat, 99 to 0. Status dead, 11, 1 of 2022. So this was before the election, even in November. And they just let it die. Referred to the Subcommittee on the Constitution, Civil Rights, and Civil Liberties. And that goes back to the sponsors of it. Referred to the Committee on the Judiciary and Additional in addition to the Committees on Education, Labor, Energy, Commerce, Financial Services, Oversight and Reform for a period to be subsequently determined by the Speaker. Who is the Speaker? Wasn't it Pelosi? Sure was. Mm hmm subsequently determined by the speaker in each case for consideration of such provisions as to fall within the jurisdiction of the committee concerned. And it says 628, that was when it was first brought forth, and then it went and died into the Constitution, Civil Rights and Civil Liberties Committee. So we have our federal government to blame. And at this time, Democrats had the majority in both the House and the Senate. But they always blame the Republicans somehow. Yeah, I know. And it's like, that's my problem. That's why I say, you know, this is not partisan. This is not a partisan issue. It's a political issue. It's not a partisan issue. It's because Democrats had the power to do something here to protect them. Because many states have been working on this for years. And they're not doing anything. They're sitting on their hands while children die. So, and they don't, they don't care. They yeah. just mention stuff at election, election time, what they're going to do. Yep. Yeah. And they don't do it when they get in. Exactly. 
And that's the part that makes makes this all so frustrating for me. And I know that there's people that would be like, yeah, if you would have voted for the Democrat, no. Democrats in my state don't get more than 35% of the vote at most. Once the Republican primary is over, and we had the Clintons to thank for that. Mm -hmm. They're a big part of the issue with why. Because as I have went through before on one of Joe's streams, um, there used to be, that Arkansas used to be a blue state. And it's not anymore. Oh, come on. And there's a reason for that. There's a reason 50% of the residents in our state don't vote. And our current governor only got 25% of adults in Arkansas voted for. Her. So that shows you she... If every adult had voted, voted in Arkansas, she would not have won. I don't blame the non-voters because we're not getting offered anything worth showing up to vote for. I can't blame them. We had two other candidates that were running for governor that were pro-LGBTQ and both of them were black. And it's not their, it's not the color skin is not the reason why they lost. Because Ricky Harrington, who was the libertarian, he almost beat Tom Cotton a few years ago because there was no Democratic nominee candidate running because Tom Cotton blackmailed him out of running. And so they all got behind the libertarian candidate. They were willing to vote for him then, but they weren't willing to do it to try to beat Sanders when he was probably the most likely to win in our state. Because people don't trust the Democratic Party. And gee, I wonder why. Yeah, because every time they're in office, you don't see anything being done. But then again, when they're not in the office, they're always telling you all they're going to do and how horrible the other person is, the other party yep. is. And then they don't do it. And that's just, that's, it's gotten to me to the point to where I just have absolutely no faith in the two-party system. Oh, me neither. Okay. And, know. yeah. Yeah. Just about everybody I know that has a good-sized family has an alphabet person in their family. Yeah. <clears throat> I, we... I've got them in mind, and I 100% love them and accept them. I raised my kids. I had lesbian roommates because I trusted lesbians more than straight women about not bringing strange men home around my kids. So, you know, and my kids have grown up around it. And it's just, it's frustrating when kids these days are more accepting of people who are different than them than most adults are. And it's like, if it doesn't personally affect you, why do you care what body parts they have? Why do you care? what they choose to wear. It's not hurting you. So why are you making a big deal about somebody choosing to be their authentic self and be who they feel they are? 
How does that harm you? Yeah, you're afraid it's going to drive people away. They're going to want to go live a free lifestyle rather than being stuck in a church. Under an authoritarian. Thank you, Jeffrey. It's actually, my birthday is actually on Tuesday, the 7th. We just celebrated with the kids today. So, since we've had, had them here. So, in fact, let me show you, Jeffrey, what I got for my birthday. I got a new mic with the stand. So, but yeah, there's my rant on this topic. Okay, I just want to say, because Day Day was saying, how's that snazzy red beret guy and the sexy guy farmer, I kid. <laughs> um, you know, Joe Firestone, the red beret guy, he's he's feeling better. Yeah. Um, he should be coming back soon. He just wants to make sure everything is a-okay. And Greg has been busy working. He's been working yeah. a lot. Yeah. But he wants to get back in and change the show around the way he, what he's doing, covering more envi environmental issues and MMT. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about switching it to the morning. So we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's going to depend on his schedule. Yes. With work and everything. So, 